Hello again, this is Bill Ward here from Bricks by the Bay 2020 Virtual showing some more of my home display. In the previous video I went over the Micropolis layout, now I'm going to show you some of my art and mosaic work. We'll start with the biggest and most well known of my work, Kermit the Frog. So Kermit and his banjo are sitting on the edge of the table, his feet hanging off the edge. By the way, during the convention I knocked his right foot off twice and had to rebuild it. He's playing his banjo. I originally built Kermit in 2008, I believe it was, uh, for the Maker Fair that year. I had built the head first and I brought it to a club meeting as a bust. I think there was a, a contest that, that month um, and I, I built the head in honor of that contest. And then later I built the rest of his body and the banjo when the Maker Fair was coming up. So you can see here the eyeballs were actually the motivation for the whole project was the eyeballs. These are what we call a Lowell sphere. That's named after Bruce Lowell. He's a well-known builder from Southern California who pioneered this idea of putting together uh, plates uh, in all six directions of a cube, but by building a curved shape on the plates, you end up with a spherical approximation. So I built the Lowell spheres for his eyes and they're mounted on a 45 degree angle and then filled in the gaps with Lego slopes. And then I built the neck. Now the pieces that adorn his neck, this light green triangles, these are actually made of a tile that is very rare. Um, there's only one Lego set that's ever included that shape in that color. There's two pieces in each of those triangles. And it was from a Lego Star Wars set, I don't remember right now what set it was, uh, from a few years ago. And so the, the cost of buying those was a little higher than it should have been, you can imagine. But I needed that size and shape and color in order to make his neck work, and I think it's an important part of the model. The banjo is actually, I put the banjo together in just a few hours, you would, if you might be surprised to believe. Sometimes these things just come together so fast. You can see the curvature of the banjo is made with a, by alternating log bricks and round one by one bricks. And then it, the, the face of the banjo is just regular bricks, and then I've decorated it with these gray parts. There's no strings. Because LEGO doesn't make strings, I was going to be able to tension anyway. I didn't want to use non-LEGO parts. Originally, the markings on the neck were very incorrect, but my girlfriend, who plays stringed instruments, pointed this out to me, and I made some adjustments recently. And I'm pretty happy with the way that the tuning machines came out. You can see there the suggestion of a worm gear mechanism in those headlight bricks. So his arms are held up really mostly by luck. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to place them correctly. Those black axles, there's one here that supports the weight of this arm braced against this transparent element that holds up the banjo. And on the other side there's a shorter axle attached to his wrist that doesn't actually go anywhere. Now in real life the Muppets are handled by the... the Muppeteers have their right hand inside the head of the Muppet and the left hand operating the left hand of the Muppet. And that's why Muppets are all left-handed. And so his, he's holding his banjo backwards according to the way most banjo players hold it because of that. Now over here we have the teddy bear. This is another one of my most well-known models. I built him about five years ago. Originally I just built the head and then I built the body over the course of the next few months. The feet I remember building at a club event where we were doing their annual holiday Christmas show. I sure hope we get to have that again someday. Probably not this year, we'll see. And uh, the rest of him I built after that. So I built him I think in 2014. He's actually hollow and basically he's a giant Lowell sphere. Each of the sides of his head and his body have studs facing in every direction. And so those are just panels of plates that are stuck together with snot bricks. And of course, if you squeeze him the wrong way, he will shatter. I brought him to uh, some of my international travels in 2017. I took him to Australia, I took him to Portland, Oregon, and I took him to Portugal. And in Australia, he shattered, and I had to rebuild him and even replace some of the broken brown parts, because you may, you may be aware of this, but sometimes Lego brown bricks shatter. Uh, and then I took him to Portland, and when I was there, Marian Asanuma, a well-known Lego builder, gave me a great tip, which is when you're packing a model for travel, wrap him in saran wrap, and then wrap that in packing tape. And all the pieces will stay together in your luggage. I started doing that, and when I took him to Portugal, I had no trouble at all. 
So speaking of those travels that year, I also built a couple of models for the events I visited when I was traveling. So in January of 2017, I went to Brickvention in Melbourne, Australia, and I built this kangaroo with a joey in honor of that event and to bring to that event. When I was there, I, I saw actual kangaroos in zoos and realized that she's a bit too wide. I think that the kangaroos are more like deer. They're pretty skinny and very delicate, uh, although they are very strong as well. And so I built her hindquarters a bit too big. Uh, but the next trip I took was to Portugal, and the Galo de Barcelos is a rooster uh, folk art of Portugal, very iconic for that country. Normally it is a three-dimensional object with a conical base, and I built it as what I call a relief mosaic. And a relief mosaic is basically a mosaic that's not flat. So you can look, if I move the camera off to one side, you can see that it's actually a couple of plates thick, especially at the base. So it's kind of a hybrid between a mosaic and a sculpture. And the border is, of course, the colors of the Portuguese flag. Uh, another relief mosaic that I did was the California Republic flag. So the state of California flag has a bear and a star, the words California Republic, and a red stripe across the bottom. Any good vexillologist will tell you you should never put words on a flag, or a difficult to draw thing such as this bear. But that's what the California state flag looks like, and you can see from the side that he is a couple of plates thick, that the words California Republic are brick thick, the red stripe actually stands out by a plate thickness, and of course the star, and a five-way symmetry is rather difficult to achieve in LEGO. The star is, is a couple plates thick too. Uh, another relief mosaic that I did a couple years ago now was this owl. And so this owl has a decoration on his chest with the quarter circle tiles that were brand new at the time, and he's basically flat, but not quite. So this is also kind of a larger version of some Christmas ornaments that were done by the artist Chris McVeigh, who has since gone on to work for LEGO, and he's the creator of the new uh, Brick Sketches line that is just now coming out. So he produced a couple of years ago some Christmas ornaments that are based around this idea of using these curved and triangular plates to make the shape of like a, say a snowman or a Santa Claus. And I've emulated that in a couple of my Christmas ornaments too. But this is sort of a larger version and not Christmassy. And when I took him to Bricks Cascade, I actually got a nice little trophy from Mo Makes Stuff Up, who is a attendee of that event. Now, accompanying all these guys, I've got two little models here: a sheep and the character Cubert from the video game. These are also based on the Lowell Sphere idea, and they were some of my first experimentations with that idea. There's one other model that I didn't display at the Bricks by the Bay virtual event, but I'll display it for you now. And this is a penguin. I built him for at Bricks Cascade, actually. While I was there, um, my girlfriend won a Lego set in the door prize, and I used parts from that Lego set to build this penguin. So, also a relief mosaic. You can see it's a couple plates thick. Made out of these triangular wing or wedge plates. When I got home, I added the, the sky background and the gray rocks, which I think really helped to make the model work. And then the final model I want to show you is this smoke jumper aircraft. And also at Bricks Cascade, it won a trophy for honorable mention in the battle theme. So alongside all of the Air Force and other military vehicles and scenes, I displayed my U.S. Forest Service airplane. This is, of course, a former Army vehicle, so it's appropriate to put it in the battle theme. Yes, the Army does have some airplanes, not just the Air Force. And so this was a C-23 Sherpa that was originally in service for the U.S. Army that was transferred to the Forest Service for firefighting duty. And what they do is they fly into a burning forest and people jump out of a perfectly good airplane. And you thought your job was hard. The propellers are not LEGO. The propellers are 3D printed. The, cl the client who commissioned this piece um, actually designed the propellers and Dan Keyes of Baylug did the 3D printing for me. 
the lettering on the wing, USFS, as well as this US Forest Service logo on the side of the fuselage were also printed by Dan Keyes. If I take off these roof panels, you can see inside. This was actually, as I mentioned briefly, a commissioned work. Uh, one of the pilots who flies these was looking for something to honor his commanding officer who was retiring. And he looked for uh, someone who could build a Lego model of the aircraft that they fly. And it was a bit behind schedule and actually I, I didn't finish it in time for the retirement party. But I still finished the model. And you can see the interior is fully detailed. It's got a cockpit. It, the, the smoke jumpers, the people who go and fight the fires, they sit on the starboard side on those white benches and across the aisle from them is their equipment. In the back, you can see that the back door is missing. Well, that's actually accurate. Uh, the back door is actually attached to the ramp in the back of the aircraft. And these red poles near the back door are for the paratroopers to jump out of. So you might think they would jump out the back where the ramp, which can fold down, is located, but no, they actually jump out the back side door. And they store the back side door on the ramp. I think that's to keep the weight balanced for the aircraft. Uh, it also has fully functional flaps. You can see those move. And ailerons. And rudders. And elevators. So they're not motorized or anything, but they do move up and down. The hardest part to get right was the shape of the engine nacelles and the shape of the wheel pods. The fuselage and the wings are pretty straight and, squ and straightforward and square, but those bits were difficult. Anyway, that brings us to the end of our presentation. Again, I'll take another quick look around the room, and here's the Micropolis layout that I showed earlier. Here's the sculptures, and a couple of the models actually that, uh, that don't really fit into those categories. I'll hit them real quick. So this one right here is the socially distanced neighborhood concert. So this family of musicians is performing on their front porch and their balcony for their neighbors. I posted about this on my blog and what I did for that one was I actually took a photograph of this model in front of the television set on which I had displayed a Google Street View of a street in San Francisco where I thought this house would fit in. Another model over here, besides some of these Lego sets that are really quite dusty, sorry about that, um, here we have my first, my oldest current mock. I have other mocks that I built and took apart, but this is the oldest one that's still together. These are from the Legoland Park. They have the Miniland where models are built, figures 10 bricks high, and I used that style after I was there in 2002 and 2003 for the Bricks West convention. I used that style to model classic space figures. These were figures from my childhood. In fact, the actual minifigures and some of the parts used to make the spaceman, like the printed bricks on the blue and the white one, are actually from my childhood Lego collection. The, the engraved brick on the red one was done for me by Tommy Armstrong, the brick engraver. And then one last model to show you real quick. This was actually something I did at Bricks Cascade a couple of years ago. It's a hover truck that's transporting a load of cargo. This was part of a challenge build where we were given two Lego sets and told to build a model using parts from those two sets together. And so at the time I was really into the science fiction levitating vehicles. And so on the bottom you can see instead of wheels it has these curved plates and grill tiles as uh, repulsors for their anti-gravity mechanism. And so that's a style of hovering vehicle that I like to build. And like any good Lego set, the driver has a coffee mug. Alright, thank you very much for taking my tour and I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to reach out to me on social media. I'm on Facebook as Bill Ward's Brick Pile. I'm on Instagram as Bill Ward's Brick Pile. I'm on Twitter as BW Brick Pile. And uh, my website, of course, is BrickPile.com. Thank you and have a great day. And stay safe.